Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgrim Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. In this episode, I want to take on the two optional hard bosses that there are in this game, even though if I could do air quotes right now, I can't because I have a controller in my hand, but if I could, I would be doing air quotes around hard, because even though I think Squaresoft intended for them to be hard, I think they really intended them to be on the level of like a, a ruby and emerald weapon, for example, from Final Fantasy VII, I don't think either one of these two optional bosses are really even that hard, and we're gonna fight the first one here in Neverland, and I kind of skipped over it pretty quickly there, but on the menu, there was no option to go to the clock tower, and the reason that is, is because the fight is actually going to take place there. But to get to the fight, we actually have to put Peter Pan in for, you know, one of our party members, and I usually like to do Goofy because we have to use magic a lot. And obviously, Goofy doesn't use too much magic. And speaking of magic, I like to go ahead and put Fireaga, Blizzaga, and Thundaga on my quick use magic menu here. Because we will be using each, you know, pretty much all of them in this fight. In addition, I wish there was like five, because we also have to use arrow and stop. But, you know, we don't have to use those as often, so I'm going to keep those off of the menu. And I might as well go ahead and put an elixir on, you know, all my slots even though I don't think we're really going to be needing this many elixirs. And I don't even think, like, I don't even think I need to put elixirs or anything on Donald or Peter Pan, because I think this fight is going to be very easy. But if we talk to Tinkerbell over here, we are finally going to be able to go to the clock tower again. And it's kind of funny to me that we have to have Peter Pan and our party to translate for Tinkerbell, because I think I've been seeing trailers on TV or commercials or something, for a movie coming out that has Tinkerbell in it, and she definitely speaks English. Obviously, it's a completely different Tinkerbell universe. I just thought it was kind of funny, and I don't even know what the movie is. I've just seen it. I think it's Tinkerbell and another fairy of some kind. If you guys know what I'm talking about, that would be kind of interesting to put in the comments. But here is the Phantom. The first thing you should do is come over here to the clock and cast Stop on the clock, and from now on, he can't really do much of anything to you. And when the orb underneath him is white, you attack with physical attacks, when it is yellow, you attack with thunder, blue, blizzard, and red fire. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only attack he can really do if you cast stop... By the way, I should probably explain what happens if you cast stop on the clock. When he... If you don't cast stop on the clock, the clock will turn. Or the, you know, the minute hand there will turn. If it gets all the way back around to noon, or not noon, but, you know, to 12, you will lose a party member. And that's not really that big of a deal, but I'm not sure what happens if it goes around three times. I'm not sure if you die yourself, but I've never had that happen. And that little swipe attack he does right there is probably one of the only attacks that he will be able to do to you. Because if you just keep doing this, you know, attacking whatever color it is and casting stop every time he flies over here to the clock, you'll pretty much be okay. And this attack right here that he does, this little purple thing that comes out, if you cast arrow on yourself before it gets to you, I've had no trouble... Or, you know, I've, I've never had it do damage to me before, so I didn't even, I've never seen that written anywhere, like in a walkthrough or anything, or anything. I'm not sure, like, if that's exactly how it works or not, but I, in my experience, if you cast arrow on yourself, that attack won't do anything. So, basically, the strategy here, I should probably use an elixir, but the strategy is every time he walks over to the, or flies over to the clock, use stop on the clock and arrow on yourself, and you'll be pretty much golden for the entire fight. So while I would not normally speed up a fight like this, you know, an optional mini, not mini boss, just an optional hard boss like this, I'm going to do so in this case, because it is one of the most repetitive boss fights I think I have ever fought in my life. You just keep waiting, and it's basically a color matching game at this point, so I will see you guys when I am done.
And for beating the Phantom, we get Stopga, and that is going to be the final upgrade to, you know, any magic spell that we have. And I always thought that the Phantom could have been a really cool boss fight, but the fact that it was so easy, and the fact that the only mechanism was the fact that you had to, you know, go between three magic spells was not really a bright spot to me. I think if you could have used, like, all of these somehow, I think that would have made it really cool. But if you guys remember a long time ago, when we were here in Neverland, we had to, or we didn't even have to, one of these doors was open and we got a treasure out of it. I don't see any doors open right now, so I'm not really sure what's going on right with that, but I think we might have to leave and come back. But the point of this is, if you guys remember, I said that every hour another door will open up. I'm not sure if I'm going to go for all of the, I think, I guess 12 different treasures that you can get in Neverland at the different hours. So I guess I'll just put a list in the description of this video of what the different items are, because we don't really need any of the items that you can get there. Like the original combs and all that, we already synthesized everything. And pretty, I don't even know what else there is, but I can't imagine that it's really worth waiting 12 hours or however long it might take. But now that we have all of the upgraded magic spells, we can talk to Merlin. Well, this is quite impressive. Here's something for your effort. And we get Donald's Dream Rod, so now we have, you know, Donald and Goofy's Dream Weapons. That might sound pretty, like, to me, I always thought the Dream Weapons were cool looking. Just because they're so plain. Look at that, it's just like a green stick with Mickey Mouse's head on it. But, it's not really that strong. Unfortunately, it's one weaker than Save the Queen. But it also does raise your max MP by two. So I guess really at this point, it's just whichever one you really like better. Because I'm not really sure how much one strength is really going to change much. But now that we have all of that done with the Phantom and the Dream Ride, there is one more optional boss. The thing, there is a couple more optional bosses, but the optional bosses in Neverland and Agrabah are kind of different. Because you probably wouldn't know about them if you never went back to those worlds. And the ones in the Colosseum that we have yet to fight are pretty easy. And I know what you're all thinking. The Platinum match is not easy by any means. But I personally think that the boss we're about to fight might be even a little bit harder than the one in the Platinum match. And I'm trying not to spoil anything for those of you who may not have seen the game, what the Platinum fight actually is. But let me go ahead and get all of my equipment set up and everything, and we will take care of this boss in Agrabah. Alright guys, I think I've got pretty much everything fixed up the way I want it. For my customized magic menu this time, I have Thundaga, Kuraga, and Araga on there. And I'll show you pretty much why we'll need each of those three. I think Kuraga and Araga are pretty self-explanatory. But there's a specific reason why I like Thunder over any of the other offensive magic spells that we have. And also, I guess I didn't really change equipment or, or abilities too much. But under items, look at all of the... Well, I had so many extra Mega Elixirs that I decided just to go ahead and give Sora most of them. I already, I think I have like five or six left. So it's not like I'm even using all the Mega Elixirs I have. But I also outfitted Donald and Goofy with full, you know, stocks of elixirs. So I don't think we're gonna die whatsoever in this fight, and I just realized it on there that we have the maximum amount of money. So we are pretty much, you know, stocked to the teeth here with things that'll make it easy for this fight. But, you know, the carpet seems like he's in a, a fit over here, and he wants us to go somewhere with him. So let's go ahead and ride on the carpet and see what's out there. This boss, you want to go ahead and cast Araga on yourself at least pretty much right away and, you know, commence to attack these orbs on his arms. I'm not sure what, how you pronounce the name of this boss. I've always said Kurt Ziza, but I, like, I've never heard it pronounced before, so I really have no idea. But I'm not sure exactly how hard everybody else thinks this boss is, but like I said before, I really think this is one of the hardest bosses in the game but only for like one specific part of the fight that I will definitely be pointing out. But anytime you take care of one of those orbs, he will drop enemy, or not enemy balls, HP balls. And once you take out both of them, you were able to attack him, you know, his actual health bar. The thing is, I don't know if I really made this clear, but in that part where we had to take out those orbs on his hands, we were not able to use magic. That is why I used arrow pretty much right out of the gate. Now, unfortunately, even if you're like at the strongest or the highest level, I don't think it's possible to take him out in one cycle here, because he'll always get up like that. You pretty much have to do the hard part. Now, when he does this thing, he's in that shield. I like to use Thunder. 
because as you can see, Thunder does a lot of damage to the shield, even though it might use a little bit more MP. The other alternative is to, like, just keep casting fire on them or blizzard or whatever. So you can do that, and it'll use less MP, but it takes absolutely forever. Or I guess you could summon, you know, anything, really. Do we have Mushu? I might summon that if we ever get back into the that phase again where he has the shield because he does a fire attack that's actually pretty cool and I only imagine or I can only imagine that it would do a lot of damage to him but we're getting pretty close to beating him here already but if my theory is correct he'll be getting up there he get he is getting up right now so what I like to do there we go got an arrow cast that was lucky now he's gonna be doing a whole lot of spinning like so if he's spinning horizontally you want to jump straight up in the air and if he's rolling you know vertically like that you want to dodge roll Obviously, I'm not doing it too good of a job at doing either one of those things, but my problem with that is if he gets too close to you, it can be very hard to know which, like, to know when to jump. So I like to keep some distance between me and him if we are going to be, or if he's going to be doing either one of those spinning like that. And another thing you got to know is you pretty much want to be locked onto him at all times, or it's going to be kind of hard to know, like, when to jump and all that. But you guys can see right there that if he's, like, right on top of you, it's pretty much impossible to know when to jump. So I recommend, like I said, to keep some distance in between. And at this point, you cannot cure yourself. So this is why you're, another reason why you're going to want to have either some elixirs or high potions or whatever. Now, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up until we get to the next phase. Because it's just this over and over until we can take care of those orbs in his hand again. Alright, so I took care of those orbs in his hands yet again, and I apparently he's just gonna die pretty much right away, so that's pretty lucky. I guess he wasn't as hard as I remember him being, but I guess the fact that I am level 90 made it a little bit easier. Now, unfortunately, we don't appear to get anything for that except for, you know, a little bit of satisfaction, I guess. And even though it looked like I was getting hit a lot by that spinning technique, and I was, I'm not going to deny that. If you are if you have arrow cast, you're probably not going to die. And I recommend if you have any Mega Elixirs or Elixirs, use them in that fight. Because the final fight in the game, like the actual one to beat the game, is really not hard at all. And I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where I would need a Mega Elixir or an Elixir in those final fights. And pretty much the only reason, like, the only places I can imagine ever using Mega Elixirs are in these optional fights. But over here in this, I don't even know what this is, like a vase or something like that, there is an original come, but it's kind of too little too late, considering that we, you know, don't really need those anymore. And I'm not sure what triggered that vase appearing right there, but I think it might have been maybe the Hades Cup. You know, beating the Hades Cup or something like that, I'm not entirely sure. But I think I'm pretty good on items already, so I don't even really need to worry about putting together my, you know, items and magic menu and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the first question mark right here. Here, guys, we have the Ice Titan, which is actually a fairly cool boss. No, oh my goodness. I did not play it, I swear, for that pun to come out of my mouth right there. But you do not want to cast Arrow on him, because if you do, the main, you know, method of attack, which is this Icicle attack, will be a lot more devastating, and you won't be able to reflect the Icicles back at him. And that's kind of a bad thing, considering the only way you have of attacking him is actually through this method of reflecting these icicles back at him. So once you do a certain amount of damage to him using the reflecting the icicle method, he will 
you know, fall down like that, you know, pretty much right on cue there, and you'll be able to come in and do a little bit of damage to him. And this is really all there is to this fight. I'm not even kidding, and I don't know why I thought this was so hard as a kid, but maybe it was because there's one specific attack that he does. I think it might be what he's about to do. Nope, that's not even it. So he apparently only rarely uses the attack I'm talking about, and that is where he does a, a huge... There we go, that's what I was talking about. If you get caught in that, you will be frozen, and you... If you actually if you run on the ice that he puts down like that you'll slip and fall so you have to be careful and the attack that he just did with those icicles falling from up and on top of me actually reminds me of an attack in Mario RPG which I cannot remember what it was called if you guys know what I'm talking about I would be like grateful for the knowledge because I cannot remember what it's called but it's a pretty common attack in Super Mario RPG so if you've played it and you remember more than I do you'll probably remember the name of the attack but let me go ahead, I guess I'll just go ahead and speed this up, because like I said, this is pretty much all there is to this fight, and there's not really any point in showing, you know, another five minutes of me reflecting icicles at him. And there we go guys, I have taken care of the Ice Titan, and there is only one more thing left for me to do in this game, and that is the other question mark match right here, but I'm not going to do that right now because that deserves to be in an episode all to its own. So I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts, and I can't wait to see you guys back for the next episode where we take on this mystery fight.